first one uh, real quick with uh, the health vendor uh, change that we're looking at. Uh, Lowndes County Health Benefit Program has been administered by group resources uh, since uh, 2014. And in an effort to become uh, efficient and more cost effective with that particular process and in speaking with our, uh, our health broker, the McCart Group, uh, we looked at uh, going ahead and uh, placing our uh, program out on the market. Uh, typically, we've been with the uh, group since 2004. And uh, basically, what we're looking at is to see what other advantages exist out there for the type of utilization that we have. Uh, our broker did run an RFP on our behalf. There was at least five vendors that uh, were requested to bid. Uh, we received proposals from Aetna, Coventry, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Georgia, United Healthcare, as well as uh, our existing group resources plan. Um, basically, what they did is uh, total expected costs as well as any disruptions were analyzed for that particular process. You have fixed costs as well as variable costs. Um, variable costs, you're looking at your medical and um, prescription claims. Claims cost, of course, as you realize, is the majority of any of the overall plan costs. Um, two areas of disruption that were reviewed were differences in medical provider networks as well as pre pre prescription uh, drug uh, programs. Um, the results of that particular bid process, you know, the analysts of the bid showed the lowest expected cost coming from uh, using the Blue Cross Blue Shield of Georgia network with uh, Par Paragon as the administrator. Uh, as it states there, the Blue Cross Blue Shield network uh, is uh, determined to have the best uh, network cost and pricing advantages for our particular area. Um, there, is a, a higher, uh, there is a higher fixed cost required to access that particular uh, claim savings, but Paragon uh, and uh, the Blue Cross Network showed to be the most cost effective for our experience in our area. I do have um, Miss Lori from McCart that would, I would like to actually come up and show the next and final slide here. If she could come up here and she'll explain the process by which they determined uh, Paragon and Blue Cross Blue Shield is providing us with the greatest savings. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, I'm Lori Shield from the McCart Group, um, and I've worked with uh, Chris and, and some of the information here that um, I'm going to kind of walk you through. Um, so if you take a look at this is kind of the evaluation we did in order to make sure that, you know, we took a look at everything from the request for proposal, and we projected your cost and compared them to, you know, current as well as what we think you're going to have projected through the rest of the year. So if you look at column one, this was what was expected. This is nine months of claims. So back at the time, probably this time last year, when you were working on your, um, you know, your analysis and tried to figure out what your projected costs were going to be, take in consideration what your enrollment is, and then some of the fixed costs that you'll see um, are listed under the plan year terms. You've got your uh, uh, third-party administrator cost, which is your admin cost, and then you have stop-loss premium, which is what you have when you are self-insured because you need to have some sort of protection if you have high-dollar claims, and that's capped at $125,000. So you're always protected <coughs> above anybody that has a shock claim over $125,000. And then you've got your projected claims, um, um, single and family, and that takes a look at, you know, your past historical claims analysis, and then they trend it forward because you have to account for increase in costs and pharmacy costs, et cetera, and then you come up with what those expected claims are, and then you project that forward. So at the time last year, your costs were expected to come in at about 3.5. So then what we did is we took nine months of actual what actually has happened for the first nine months of the year, you factor in those, those same um, bits of information, and you really are coming in at about 3.6. So that's actual claims. So for the first nine months of the year, taking everything in consideration, you're hitting at about 3.6. And again, this is through 9.30. All these are claims, by the way. Column one is expected claims. Column two is actual claims. That is correct, yes. So then what we had to do is say, okay, so we take nine months of actual, and then let's project where you're going to be at the end of December, 
and through some actuarial analysis, um, the projection is to come in at it about 4.8, okay? So then we said, okay, so then let's look at what the competitors are coming in saying um, based on what your current renewal from HCC with the Cigna network is, and that is in column four. So what they're saying for 2014, if you stay exactly where you are with the Cigna network and be, having the claims administered by um, uh, group benefit resources, you're going to hit about five million five. So we compare that to the bid from Paragon, and with the switch in using the Blue Cross network, they have some of the most significant and deepest discounts within the Georgia area. So that in co com combination with their medical management, they use a company called uh, Doctors Direct. We, even though it's a little bit more expensive from the administrative side, your cost is a little bit more expensive. But again, your biggest dollar, as Kevin said, comes through on the claims. So with being able to manage those claims at a reduced discount, the projected claims for the year of 2014 um, are, are about a million in saving, about four million six. And so that brings us to the recommendation that Kevin had indicated on why that we think moving with Paragon, the administrator, using the Blue Cross Blue, Cross Blue Shield network um, is going to be the best cost savings for the county. Anybody have any questions? Um, did I go through it too fast? I'm not sure if this is a question for you or Kevin, but to okay. what extent can we control our formulary uh, compared to what our formulary is now with, uh, with Cigna? our prescription drug formulary. Do we accept whatever plan they are offering that formulary or are we able to? We have a representative. Okay. Okay, can you come up please? Paragon has actually offered our preferred vendor, which would be Partners RX. They're out of Scottsdale, Arizona. And we will be able to take your current formulary information, if we can get that, and go into the following year with the current formulary so that you have as little disruption as possible. And we will look for people who already have had some pre-authorized medications at the end of the year, and we will carry those over to the, to the first month in 2014. <coughs> They would be provided their first fill, and it would be explained to them then that they would have to go back to the doctor, get a new authorization for the drug, and then it would carry forward. But we, we can match your formulary. We can make changes or keep it as it is for the first year. And when you say match, uh, to make sure we're on the same page, not just match the drugs that are covered, but the tier at which they're covered. Yes, we can. Once we get all of that information, we will get with this vendor and we will, we will work all that out and then provide that information back to Kevin. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Um, can you explain to us, a little confusing, there's a McCart group, there's Paragon, then you just mentioned one that was a prescription drug as well. Can you explain the difference? Okay. McCart group, I guess, is with, with you, your okay, company, Kevin. right? The, the McCart group themselves, they are our insurance broker. They go out on our okay. behalf to go ahead and do the minutia of what it takes to uh, do this kind of review. And uh, Paragon themselves, they are a third party administrator. They'll actually administer the health program for us, taking care of all the administrative aspect. All right, now just a moment ago, when we were under columns one and two, <clears throat> we were talking about the stop loss premium. What is, I, I heard there was a cap of 125,000, but there was something else you mentioned there that I failed to okay, get. Um, so the, the individual stop loss um, is the dollar amount of the maximum exposure. In other words, the maximum you, the county, will pay from an individual that has a high dollar claim. Which is 125000 That is correct. So anything above that um, will, will not be, a, will be handled by the reinsurance carrier. In other words, that won't hit your experience. Then there's also a 50,000 aggregating spec on top of the individual stop loss, meaning anybody who goes above the 125 and then has an additional 50, or that 50 could be met by multiple people, but once that additional 50,000 is met, then also that money above that will not go against the county's insurer. Who's your reinsurer? Um, 
Blue Cross. They're Blue doing Cross. that's part of their proposal. Okay. Commissioner Ryan. Any other questions? Yes. yes. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Have we, when, when we're switching from one network to another one, have we done any research on how that will affect our employees as far as which doctors they're currently using, which are considered in network, out of network, and how does that change for them? Well, of course, the biggest network that exists is probably the Blue Cross Blue Shield network in and of itself. And as soon as we have all that information and utilization, of course, there's a lot of behind the scenes work that goes along as well, should there be somebody who's outside of the network us going ahead and approaching them and seeing if we can work on uh, some contracts and stuff like that. But basically, there shouldn't be too much disruption when it comes to that. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I just had a question uh, regarding the, uh, I guess, the partnership or, or what have you. Uh, I'm not quite understanding the, what it means to be self-insured um, as, as a county government. I know, you know, from the city government, uh, what self-insured means as well as they're, them having the clinics and so forth. I'm just wanting to get a better understanding in regards to uh, being self-insured and work, working with the other uh, entities we're talking about. Really, <clears throat> Commissioner Marshall, the difference between the uh, city and the county is uh, very minimal. They, too, are self-insured, as you mentioned. Um, the benefit for our employees in being self-insured is that it gives us uh, more control over the allocation of those premiums and for the uh, supervision of our plan by working with McCart and now Paragon. Uh, it gives us more flexibility, I believe, than being actually under contract. If y'all are the experts, but if y'all differ from that, please tell me. But I think it gives us the flexibility as an entity that we really need for our employees it does provide you with more flexibility in your plan design um, it, it gives you um, sometimes when you work specifically with a carrier you you, you fall under more of an umbrella package and so there are standard plans or there are processing guidelines within a, a more complex environment that you must comply with um, but being self-funded and stepping out of the carrier industry, so to speak, for the actual administration does give you more flexibility and control. And uh, when you talked about, you know, the different vendors that we are bringing to the market, outside of a carrier relationship, when you go self-funded, you're working with that carrier and all of the departments under that umbrella. When you work with a third-party administrator, we go to the market on your behalf and we look for what we think will be the best vendors that will fit with your philosophy and your members. And so that we are like the nucleus and then we provide the other arms that we feel will be the best fit. And you can, we can also help you manage those costs where that sometimes is a little bit difficult when you're in, involved in a carrier relationship. Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Um, I'm, a, I'm an insurance broker myself, so I, I'm, I'm kind of looking at this from as a layperson, though. Sometimes we use terminology in the industry that people don't understand. Can somebody just give us a, a simple definition of what it means to be self-insured? What is the difference between that and being insured through a company? Go ahead. So, whichever, but whoever wants to do that, Mr. Pritchard, whoever. Because <laughs> well, I think that may be part of some of the confusion okay. here. Right. Sets, and you, as the um, contracted Insured. employer, <laughs> pay that set rate, right. no matter what happens, by by single, by family, they they set the rate. So essentially, the the insurance carrier is owning all the risk because at the end of the day, I mean that's the only premium they're going to collect, regardless of what happens. Being self-insured really. It's Essentially, you're paying your own claims. You know, you have fixed costs to, that, that factor into that, but then you develop what they call a theoretical premium, almost like a fully insured rate, that includes the claim costs and the fixed costs, so that to an employee, they don't, it, it doesn't look the same. They just pay this amount, 
and they get all the coverage they need. So from a cash flow perspective, for, from, from the, the county's perspective, then you're able to, you know, really pay only the claims that are incurred on a month-by-month mm -hmm. -month basis. So it, it, it's more advantageous from a, you know, a, a cost perspective and being more of a cash flow. But to the employee, it does, they really don't, it looks the same <coughs> Unless it goes up, of course, it won't look the same. And I guess that's why I'm trying to figure well, a balance. That's well, the premium won't look the same, but the type of insurance, the fact that the we're partially self-insured would not change. They're going to pay a portion out of their paycheck, just like they would as if it was, was fully insured. Um, it just allows more flexibility um, on the employer side to do plan design to help better control costs, to create either, you know, maybe you tweak a, de a deductible or a copay. Versus when you're fully insured, there are canned products that they take off the shelf and you buy A or B or C or D. So you lose the ability kind of to say, what's best for our employees? Do we have high utilization on emergency room? Do we maybe need to up the copay on that and provide some education? Just gives you a lot more flexibility and kind of design your And, and you're all, as a broker, you invest or base that analysis on what the information we give you, and you and you shop around on our behalf. Yeah. But the Blue Cross Blue Blue Shield and, and that aspect, the third party aspect, I guess that's that's what's the question now. What what are the, what is their role? Uh, well, you're using the Blue Cross network. So Paragon is actually what we call a TPA or a third party administrator, which is what you had under the your current arrangement. It's just that that third party administrator is group resources. Group resources. And you were using the Cigna network. So now you're moving administrators to Paragon, who we believe has tighter controls, has best in class partners they work with to help control the cost better. But your employees will be accessing the Blue Cross provider network instead of Cigna. Okay. Does that help? Or I'm fine. Uh, I think uh, the chairman said we're going to talk about it, uh, or, or I'll be able to ask you some questions later if needed be. I just, I just like, I want to, I guess when we're talking about increasing insurance, possibly increasing insurance premiums, I like to know the details in a sense, the roles of the broker, broker as well as the, I guess, the third party. Okay. All right. I need more coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, moving on.